thank you everyone for tuning in and watching this exclusive interview featuring the voice of Yae Miko. Let's get started. Today's special guest is Retina, the voice of Yay Mako in Gation Impact. Hi, how have you been? Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Many fans are actually anticipating this interview because of your role in Gation Impact as Yay Mako. But before we can speak about your role in Gation Impact, let's cover a bit of, about your voiceover origins and tell us how you began your voiceover career. How I got into voiceover was I grew up loving cartoons um so like a lot of kids who grew up in the 90s you know era i was raised by parents and a television and so i watched a lot of cartoons and i loved them and at some point somebody clued me into the fact that cartoons do not speak for themselves which blew my mind and that in fact it was a person who did this <clears throat> and um you know there were a handful of people doing it and they were doing all the voices and that just was that just was so cool um and you know at that point there wasn't a whole lot i could do with it i was i grew up in detroit and we don't exactly have a robust acting community there um there is some but not necessarily um you know what we have in in on the coasts and fast forward i moved to california for grad school and um just kind of in my social life met some people who were you know they worked a day job but they had other things that they were pursuing so they were pursuing acting they were pursuing comedy and one person happened to be pursuing voiceover and it just lit up a little light bulb in my teeny tiny head and it went oh i've heard of this it's the thing that makes the cartoons talk how do i do this and that's how we began i started taking classes and um one class became a lot of classes. I was taking classes at night after work, um, on the weekends, basically any waking hour that was not eating, sleeping or day job, I was taking class. And um, eventually that became demos and a website and I got reps and was able to turn it into an actual job. Gation impact aside, where else can we hear your voice? So you might have heard me in Fire Emblem. So I play uh, the English voice of Ishtar in Fire Emblem Heroes. And uh, you'll hear me as Leone in Fire Emblem Three Houses and also in Heroes. Um, you might also hear me in Tresse, which is uh, an anime on Netflix. I play several different characters in that one. And where else can you hear me? Um, commercials, uh, narration, e-learning, all sorts of places. <laughs> Moving on to Gation Impact, can you tell us uh, your journey on how you became the voice of Game Miko and the type of direction that Chris Viella, the voice director, gave you in order for your voice to fit the character? Um, so for Genshin Impact, um, just like any voiceover role, we auditioned for it. And, um, you know, we got the auditions. The auditions are coded, you know, so we have no idea what we're auditioning for. I did a bunch of auditions for the same project and then forgot about them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, fast forward a certain amount of time, my agent gets in touch and says, you book this thing. And we go into a room, which was, I think we started recording this during the pandemic. So I was in my home studio and we get on the line and they tell us it's Genshin Impact. And I, at that point I had heard of the game. I didn't play it. Um, I have a number of voiceover friends who are in it and um, I knew of their involvement. So that's that was kind of my knowledge of Genshin at, the, at that time. And then as far as um, Yaimiko is concerned, you know, when the audition came through, there was a certain description of, of what they had in mind for her. And so I put forth my best version of that. And um, the Cliff's Notes version of that is whatever description I read made me think of Blair Waldorf in um, Gossip Girl. So I kind of came at it from that perspective. And then when we got into the booth with Chris and the folks at MiHoYo, um, <clears throat> it was more of a, a workshop, you know, so they, they liked the audition. They also had some 
thoughts in mind of like how she was going to sound and they played some references for me and we just kind of workshop back and forth until we got to where Yaimiko ended up. And of course, back then, uh, the character was just an NCP. Uh, an NPC, yeah, a non-playable NPC. character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Did, did you, were you aware that later on uh, it would become a playable character or a character that... I found out when you guys did. So I, um, you know, we just, you know, as an actor, you just kind of go in and you're present in the moment. Um, I didn't know, like, who Yaimiko was going to be in the universe of Genshin, you know, on day one. You, there's just no way of me knowing this. I could have easily have been selling you, like, ramen at a stall, as I could have been, you know, the the guji eye of the Grand Narakami Shrine. Like, no idea and so you just kind of go in there with an open mind and an open heart and you play and you know eventually they started building her storyline and you know it, it came to pass that we got to be playable so <laughs> um but yeah it's a, it's just sort of a day-to-day -day kind of a thing what was your initial impression of the character this is presuming you received some kind of uh image or some kind of visual aid for the character so if I recall correctly, there was not an image. Um, I, I'm basing everything on just verbal descriptions of her attitude and how she shows up in the world and kind of, you know, what they want her to be. So, you know, whenever the first time she appeared in the game is the first time I actually got to see what Yamiko looked like. Like, I'm trying to think back. I'm like, no, nope, we did not get a model sheet. I didn't get a picture of her. I think maybe, you know, there was cutscene where I got to see her and had to match the picture of her speaking. And so that's that was probably the first time I got to meet Yaimiko's image. Have you have you played the game yet? Um, I played a little bit. I don't have a lot of time to game, so I like to describe my skills as enthusiastic but talentless. Uh, if you guys have been following me on social recently, you'll know that I play on a really old iPad, which recently died. I have the world's oldest iPad and it used to crash all the time. And so uh, it finally just gave up the ghost and and died on me just as the banner was coming out. Oh no. <laughs> so um, right now I cannot play. I think my, my replacement has come in, but I haven't set it up yet. So we will we will see. And then, you know, I started playing Genshin pretty late in the game. Like, the game had been out for a while. And so I have a lot of catching up to do. I don't even know if I'm going to get to my own story quest yet. Have you met any of your other colleagues? Any other Genshin Impact cast members? Um, so I have. I've had a chance to um, meet Anne and Zach. We did the, the live stream together. And then I've been on both of their streams um, pulling for Yaimiko. And then some of the other actors who are in Genshin are also, you know, they're in other projects or I've known them from class. So we're friends from even before they got their roles, which is lovely because, you know, I get to cheer them on and, and watch them grow in their careers and, and celebrate the fabulous work that they're doing. In your opinion, what makes Yae Miko stand out from your previous roles? Yae Miko is different in that, first of all, she's, a being, you know, she's she's not human, um, and she's wise beyond her hundreds and hundreds of years, right? Um, but she's wise with also just kind of a sense of playfulness. Um, so I I think she's she might be shady in a way that Retina the human is not, um, but it's kind of fun. I think it's I liken it to like whenever you have um, let's say a confrontation with somebody and you wish you had that sick burn in the moment, she always has the sick burn. Boring. Utterly boring. Ugh, what could have possibly persuaded these people to become authors? Did you expect this game to become a worldwide hit? So I had no idea how big the game was when I joined. I had kind of an inkling, but I wasn't like really paying attention. Um, and I just knew that like my friends who had been in the game, like I was super happy for them when they got to announce their roles and that, you know, it seemed like it was popular. I mean, I had 
like I said, had no way of knowing. I didn't know how many people were playing the game. At some point, I think I looked at the Genshin Twitter and I realized there are 3 million people on there. And then I was like, oh, okay. So this is a big game. Um, there are some people who are, you know, really passionate about it. And I'm I'm all for it. But I, I came in relatively green, I would say. How's the, how's the fandom treating you? So far, so good. Um, I, I am super grateful. It's been a very warm welcome, um, very effusive. And so I'm I'm super grateful. Um, I've heard a lot of really nice comments and a lot of, lot of lovely thoughts um, all across my socials and some places in between. So, you know, to the fandom, thank you. It's, it's lovely to be a part of this wonderful community and I can't wait to keep getting to know you guys um, as we continue on this journey together. Let me extend that by saying congratulations on this role. I mean, this is again, a big role on a big game. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't like, like I said, I could have easily been selling you tofu in a, in a stall. I had no idea. Um, you know, and I think you guys have been waiting for a long time to kind of figure out who the voice was behind her. And so, um, I applaud your patience. <laughs> and finally, with a 2.5, we finally figured that out. <laughs> right? It's been a while. <laughs> What's a fun fact that you and your character share that you think fans might be interested in hearing about? We both like reading, although I tend to read more nonfiction than light novels. Um, and I don't know. I think I share, like, I share that kind of cheeky sense of humor, although I don't, I don't tend to unleash it on you know, people at their expense. Um, but I do, you know, I, I love comedy and I love um, improv. And so like the way that she gets to interact with people and just kind of like, just kind of poke fun at them and wink at them is, has been super fun for me. Here's a fun fact about Yae Meiko. Her name, uh, Yae, can be roughly translated or interpreted as multi-layered and her last name uh, Miko, like the characters that are used to spell her name, to, to write her name, literally mean godchild, which is appropriate considering she's the head priestess over at Grand Narukami's uh, shrine. So a little, a little fun fact there. <laughs> like your character, if you ever had your own publishing house, what would be the name of it and what types of books and or journals would you publish? Ooh, um... I don't know. I, I think, well, I think if I had my own publishing house, it would probably be like, I think I would publish a lot of nonfiction just because that's where I go. Um, and I don't know what I would call it. So maybe maybe the Kitsune Network can suggest some names for, for Retina's publishing house. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of think, hey, but maybe the fans can suggest it down in the comment section below. What would be the name of Retina's publishing house? There's a particular dish that can only be attained with Yay Meiko called Fukuchi Udon. What would your personal item dish be and what effect would it have? So I'm part Filipino. My special dish would probably some be some form of like pancit. And I, I think, you know, if you eat it, I think it just, it's like extra energy. Like it just keeps you from losing HP. Um, Cause I think we could all use a little more energy. So, but it would be like healthier than a monster drink. <laughs> Which would probably be in the game, like poison solely. It, it probably it, would be, it would have like Hilatrol skull on it. <laughs> um. <laughs> Moving away from your voice acting career, what's something else that you do in your spare time? Any hobbies? Hobbies have sort of shifted since the pandemic, but before the pandemic, I was a pretty avid runner and dancer, and that was just sort of my hobby life. Um, I think during the pandemic, it's been more like yoga and walking my dog and, you know, just making sure I stay connected with the people that I love, my friends and family. So, um, but yeah, hobby wise, it's, it's sort of been a little bit weird because I haven't been able to do some of the things that I, I enjoy doing to just kind of relax and chill out. So for fans watching us right now that want to become voice actors, what type of advice would you give them? The biggest thing I would say is study. Make sure that your, you know, your acting craft and your game is is up to par. Um, I think a, a lot of, there's a lot of great advice out there. You know, um, D. Bradley Baker has So You Want to Be a Voice Actor. It is comprehensive AF. 
And so I send a lot of people there when they are first getting started. And then I say, if you've read that and you have any questions afterwards, then you come to me. Um, but, you know, really, we have to just like an athlete, um, you got to do your reps. So um, Kobe didn't get to be Kobe without practicing layups and, you know, dunks and, you know, free throws and all of those things and just getting those fundamentals in until they were muscle memory. And that is the same thing that we do as actors, which is, you know, you get your fundamentals in, you make it muscle memory, and then you can play. That gives you the freedom to just do whatever else comes into your mind and heart. Any final messages or statements that you'd like to say to your fans? You know, thanks for having me, Kitsune Network, and um, thanks for inviting me to come play. I will just say thank you, Genshin fans, because you've been super warm and welcoming to me, and I can't wait to learn more about this community and, you know, be a part of it. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, Redna, for joining us today. It's been fantastic. It's been fun. You guys don't go anywhere just yet because, yes, it is that time we are giving away these awesome autographed prints signed by Retina herself. All you have to do is actually name Retina's publishing house. What would be the name of it? <laughs> and answer the following question. Why do you like Yay Mako? That's it. All you have to do. Name Retina's publishing house. And why do you like Yay Mako? I keep saying Mako. Miko. Miko. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, everything. <laughs> and I'll leave you guys with these awesome videos I know you love. Until next time.